So today, as stated, we'll be looking at introduction of vectors. And in this session, we'll be focusing on differentiating between a vector and a scalar quantity, writing a vector in the form x, y, finding the magnitude of a vector, and identifying equal, inverse, and parallel vectors. So Karima, I want you to look at this graph. Pay very keen attention, and then I want you to answer these questions. And you at home, answer these questions as well and see if you're getting them correct. All right, I think I can do that. All right, so can you describe this movement? Let me go again, look at it. Boom. Mm -hmm. All right, can you describe that movement? Using cardinal points? Yes. That looks like north and it looks like six units north, am I correct? All right, so that's, so from here to here would be one, yes. two, yes. three, four, five, six. All, All right. right, six units north. I'll take that. I How about teacher is this watching. one? That looks like three units east. Three units east. Okay, so we have one, two, three units. All right, I'll take that. All right, I feel bright this morning. Can this move now be described in terms of east and north? Hmm. So, that looks like the same three units east and six units north. So, yeah, three units east, six units north. So you would go one, one two, three units east yes. and then one, two, three, four, five, six units north. Right. All right, all right, I'll take that. Is it possible to determine the distance covered in the final move? I think so, you know. I think so, but I'm hoping that we learn something more about that distance thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hoping that we learn some more about that for today's lesson. So I know it's possible, but I'm going to leave it until, you know, later on. All right. So viewers at home, you too can determine at the end of our session if it is that we can determine the distance of that movement right there. All right, so as stated, we're looking at vectors today. Now, what is a vector? Karima, what is a vector? All right, well, you brought the answer right up on screen. I don't have to guess. <laughs> so a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So for it to be a vector, it must have both magnitude and direction. All Sounds right. interesting. All right. Here so are some, some examples. examples. Yes, examples <laughs> of vector quantities include velocity. I would have heard these terms before. Right, yes. right. Acceleration, vroom, force, vroom. and one of my all-time favorites, bearings. All right. I just want to ask this question real quick. What is a quantity with only magnitude called? Because it's a vector have magnitude and direction. I think it's a scalar, you know. It is a scalar. All right. And then quickly, just example of scalar quantities, length, mass, and area. All right. One, one thing. All right. So we're going to take a break ahead of and head over to Lotto. School's not out. We'll be right back. Interesting stuff ahead. <laughs> if you have your books and your pencils, now is a good time to get them, okay? Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. Welcome back to School's Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. Today, we have been discussing CSEC Mathematics, Introduction to Vectors. And we will continue. So Karima, you were saying about what's a vector and a scalar again? Right. So we said a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. And when we talk about a quantity that has only magnitude, we're talking about a scalar, Latoya. Right? Great. So we have vectors 
and scale our quantities. Excellent. So let's do a quick recap at home. Um, so we're going to go through each of the quantities and you're going to decide if it's a vector quantity or a scalar quantity. Hmm. 5M, what say you? That should be 5 meters. 5 meters, well. sorry. Uh, I am seeing magnitude, but I don't see any direction. Okay. 5 meters in which direction? That looks scalar to hey. me. Scalar, all right. 30 meters per second east. What say you? Hmm. So I see magnitude and direction. So that must be a vector quantity. There you go. I feel bright. Five meters north. What say you? Again, I'm seeing magnitude, five meters, direction north. Sounds like a vector quantity again. Perfect. 20 degrees Celsius. I think you have this one. Looks scalar to me. Scalar indeed. Mm -hmm. 256 bytes. Seen on the magnitude again, that looks scalar. 4,000 calories, something we should not be having. I was about to say that, you know, scalar. Scalar, scalar indeed. indeed. <laughs> All right. Now, did you know that vectors are used to determine the duration of a voyage as well as to tell on which country a ship will make landfall? Did you know that? That sounds interesting, Latoya. And yes. I'm seeing here where it says captains use vectors to determine wind speed and direction, ocean current, as well as the velocity of the ship. And the journey is the result of all of these vectors. It mm. is indeed. And here is an image because we, we don't want you to think that when we're doing math, it's just all math and boring real you know, life stuff. I wonder if that's what Christopher Columbus used. I was wondering the same thing. So we're seeing here where the red vector is showing the ship's velocity. And that is the path that the ship would take, you know, if there weren't any interference from ocean current and wind speed. Okay. But as we look at the diagram, we're seeing that blue vector for ocean current and that green vector for wind speed and direction. Mm -hmm. And so with those affecting the ship velocity mm -hmm. we're seeing that black vector now which is showing the ship's actual movement so you know it's possible that, that a ship was leaving spain right trying to head to the united states right but with ocean current and wind speed and direction the they ship end up end up at where is that now hispaniola don't yes, quote me. somewhere between haiti and dominica republic somewhere there yes all right good so stuff. vector is very useful all right so I wanted to pay attention to my grid again. And vectors can be represented graphically using an arrow as you are seeing on your screen here. And we're calling this vector AB. We're naming our vector AB. This vector shows a movement from A to B. So we are going from A, A being here, and we're going to B as indicated on our vector by the arrow there. And so if we're writing vector AB, we write capital A, capital B with a little arrow at the top showing that we're going from A to B. So Latoya, that arrow at the top is very, very critical. Very critical. Yes, because it's showing us, uh, you know, that movement, what's the start point right. and what's the end point of right. this movement. Perfect. All right, so the length of the arrow indicates the magnitude of the vector. So pretty much when we draw our vector on a grid, you know, using these arrows, the, the magnitude speaks to the length I was just about to say, I've been hearing this word, magnitude. magnitude. All right, so and when what if I don't know what magnitude is? So when we talk about magnitude, we talk about? We're talking about the length of the, the, the representation Great. that we have there. And of course, it says the direction of the vector is represented by the direction of the arrow. And you'd have pointed that out earlier. Right. So I could not look at this vector and call it vector BA. Because when I look at the arrow, I see that it's not a movement from B to A but rather it's a movement from, from A, A to, to B. B. So direction is so important. All right. 
Can you now describe the vector shown in terms of horizontal and vertical components? So, which we would have done earlier. Yes. I wish you could touch the screen for me, um, Latoya. So Definitely. I'm, right. So when I'm moving from A, I'm going to see a horizontal movement of uh -huh. one unit. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to be going up. That's vertical. And that looks like four units. Mm -hmm. So one, one, two, three, four. All right. All right. So horizontal component, one. Mm -hmm. Vertical component, four. Okay. All right. Let's see. One. I'm right. I'm right, I'm right. Four. All right, great. All right. I was just about to ask, and then it came up. Why couldn't I look at the movement upward first, instead the vertical movement instead of the horizontal movement first? Well, we, we're looking at this now as it came up on screen. The, the vector can be written in the form x, y, and you know, x there represents our horizontal movement right in other words that movement is parallel to the x-axis so right. we're moving similar to how our x-axis moves yes right and the y component speak to our vertical movement and right. so that would be parallel to our y-axis y-axis all right x-axis okay beautiful so we always have to take into consideration our horizontal, horizontal. movement yes. first and then our vertical movement. And I have a dance coming up for you. Oh, dear Lord, save <laughs> us. Mm. All right. right so, so we would have covered uh, that right. part. So can you now tell me what would be the vector in the form x, y for vector a, b? I'm sure our students can tell us Can that. you tell me? Yeah. Write it down. I'm waiting. I'm looking. Let me, let me see. And uh, you, you, you don't write it, it, write it. I think that's one four. Okay. Yep. One four. All right, one four. Good it job. Is, uh, All right. Now here's an activity. Parrot Morgan hid his treasure and left his map, left this map as a guide to the treasure. To prevent persons from finding the treasure, he gave part of the route as vectors. For another part, he drew the route which you must describe using a vector. So it seems as if Parrot Morgan, you know, really didn't want anybody to find his treasure. Which, uh, you yeah, know, he, he called up the thing. <laughs> are we going to find it of anyway? Of course, we're a mathematician. So. And we're Jamaicans. Uh, we go find okay, it. Okay, <laughs> here goes. All right, so from start point, you're going to travel along the vector to... Five. So right, we're starting so here. Starts, mm -hmm. Yes. So and two five. So where do you think we'll end up if we are starting here and we're moving along the vector two five? Well, I know that two is a positive two, so mm -hmm. we want to speak a little bit about that, um, Latoya, because yes. the two is saying to me. Yes, we spoke about it being movement parallel to the x-axis, mm -hmm. but we also want to focus on is it left, is it right, mm -hmm. how am I moving? And so that positive two is saying I should move two units to the right. right. All right. right. Uh-huh. And then the five. And the five now, remember we spoke about vertical movements. And so, uh, but am I moving up or down? So I'm going to look at the positive five. And so that is saying to me that I'm moving five units up. up. And right? if we think about our Cartesian plane, um, the positive units would be going upward and rightward so on our up, Cartesian increase, plane. Right. right. Makes sense. All right. So here we go. Two, five from the start to our um, little tower here. So... One, uh, so one, two, yes. one, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. All right, there we go. Pirate Morgan thought he could fool us. <laughs> no, he can't. All right. All right, then. So then it is now saying that from here, the lighthouse, we should now travel three, two. And as we discussed just now, three, the three and the two are positives, meaning that we are moving three to the right because we do our horizontal movement first. Yes. And then two upwards. All right. So here we go. Okay. All right. Now this is saying give the vector of the movement shown with the broken lines. All right. All right. So we're moving from the car now to the, I'm going to say the apple trees. All right. Could be a forest. Who knows? <laughs> but yes. 
Mm. So, so I'm looking at this Latoya and I'm seeing the horizontal movement is a rightward movement. So mm -hmm. I see that that's positive one. Right. But then I'm moving down mm -hmm. ward and it's three units down. So that vector looks like one negative three. Am I correct? All right. Let's see. Uh, I'm just Brilliant. on the ball this morning. All right. How about... Now we're going to travel along the vector negative two, negative one. Negative two, negative, negative one. one. All so, right, so I see negative two, meaning I should move two units to the left. Because we do our horizontal movement first. Yes. Right. And then I'm seeing negative one. Right. Which means I'm moving down right. one unit. That looks All like right. it should take me to the castle. So let's see, you said one, two, and then one. Yes. Let's see. There oh, you go. Great. All right. So I see I see an instruction there that's asking us to write, write down, down the, the vectors. vectors for the route. So let's start with the starting point. So that's, so that's two, two five. five. All right. So Latoya, you read for me and I'll just three, two. jot them down. One, negative three. Negative two, negative one. Viewers at home, ensure that you're writing down your vectors as well because you're going to need this information for our next activity. All right? Now, this is saying, can you state the vector for each part of the return journey? So if I'm returning, it means that I will have to now go back where I'm coming from, right? Pretty much, yes. So the last place I was was at the castle here. Correct. And I came from... I came to the castle from the Apple forest trees. tree. All right. <laughs> All right. So what was our vector for the, the what was our last vector again? Uh, negative two, negative one. Okay. So if I want to now go from the castle to the tree, how would I get there? So we need to still do our horizontal movement. And okay. I'm seeing now that I'm now moving right okay so that's now a positive two so let me mm -hmm. write that down below this one positive two and i'm moving one unit up and so that's positive one all right let's see so from here to here that's one two and then a positive one yep brilliant okay so now we are going from the tree to the car i'm assuming and so that looks like... Uh, what was our original vector from the car to the tree? One, negative three. Okay, so how do we move from the tree now to the car? All right, so I'm seeing a leftward movement of one unit. Mm -hmm. So that's negative one. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing an upward movement of three units. So okay. that's positive three. All right, let's see. I hope our students are Negative writing down one, these vectors. Positive three, that's what you said? Yes. All right. So now we want to move from our car to the lighthouse. What we had initially, what did we have initially? We had what a vector three, two. Okay. So if we are going in the opposite direction now, we're returning. How, what, okay. What's that? Interesting, I like that word that you use, opposite. We'll talk about it in a minute. Right. So horizontally, I'm moving three units to the left. Yes, and two units down. So that's negative three, negative two. All right. Now we are going back to the start, going back to the board because we find the treasure and we want to go home now. I know, right? So how do we get from the lighthouse back to the boat, back to home so we can sort out the treasure, call grandma, call mommy, and divide cheer up, up the spoils, yeah. Everybody get them peace. So we have two units to the left. Mm -hmm. So that's negative two. And we have five units down, so that's so negative. So you said left is, okay, okay. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm yep. back to my boat. So hey, you would have used that word earlier, Latoya. You, you, mm -hmm. you spoke about opposite and you were asking our students um, yes. in television land, what do you notice about these vectors? So they have been written on the board. And so, you know, I want our students to pay keen attention to what's happening on the board. So I've written at the top part our vectors for the journey to the treasure. And below that, we have the vectors for the journey 
back to the boat. And I'm looking here, Latoya, and I'm noticing that where I had negative two, negative one, I now have two, one. Mm. And where I had one, negative three, I have negative one, positive three. And I'm kind of mm, seeing the that pattern. pattern. Yes. yes, I see that pattern coming out and you know the word that you, well, you would have mentioned opposite, opposite right. so we notice that these vectors, the direction, they are opposite. So while this vector took me from the trees mm -hmm. to the castle, this vector here would take me from the castle back to the trees. So right. I'm seeing opposite directions right. taking place and there's opposite. a word. There's a word. It starts with an I. In indigo in inverse, girl. inverse, sure. inverse, inverse. So we're saying that inverse. these vectors are the inverse of each other. Yes, all they right? are indeed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yes, they in are. In a few. All right. Now, after finding the treasure, you decided to take the shortest road because you can't. But I would go around story, come back around. Part. Excitement, girl. Why take the long road home? <laughs> to get from the castle to the boat. No. From looking at our map, what would now be the shortest distance from the castle to the boat? So initially we went up so round so down so. Instead of doing all of that, I don't need to go back to the tree, the car and the lighthouse. Come find something already. So I just now come straight across here. So makes sense. And there you go. Voila! I reach Voila, at the indeed. boat. Such a short but distance. But it is now asking me to calculate the distance from the castle to the boat. Mm. Now, initially we were counting. Yes. But now this is slant. Yes, and so we need to find the, the, that distance. Looks, right. Looks so a bit tricky to me, you know. How do a you little bit think tricky. we can find the distance from, from the castle to the boat? I'm thinking, thinking though think that there, there are some things that we need to consider. Right. You know, when we're looking at this this particular question. Yes. You know, so first of all, can we represent or can we look at the horizon? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> can, we think alike. can we identify the horizontal and vertical components of this movement from the castle all to right, the horizontal boat? Horizontal and vertical. Okay, so horizontal first. That right, would have so been here. Yes. And then I now go downward to the boat. Right, so we move left, which is negative right. four. So I want to yes. point that out. And then I'm moving downward, yes. which was downward movement of three yes. units. So that's negative three. So I'm just going to write that on the board quickly. So we have a vector quickly. of negative four, negative three. All right. And they're asking us to find the distance. All right. Now, with the shortest route formed or decided upon, along with the vertical and horizontal components, I am seeing a triangle. I am seeing it too. That's why I'm, right. I'm trying to represent right it on the board. The triangle. And I want to point out that this negative four and this negative three, just want to point out because I yes. don't want anybody to think that this is a distance because we know distance is Cannot be negative, not negative. So right. this negative four is representing the movement that we made, right. which we said is a leftward movement. Right. And so we're representing it with a negative four. And the three here was a downward movement. And so we're representing it with a negative three. I, something just came to my mind. So that means that when we have the negative, the negative portion of the numeral is telling us the movement. Yes. And then the positive is telling us the movement. So it's not that the so, num the numeral is negative, but it's so describing the movement. Yes, you, you're just getting that? Kind of. Okay. I'm slow sometimes. I don't okay. have breakfast yet. All right. Sorry. So I'm you seeing know? the right angle triangle though. And I want us to, I want our students to think because there must be a mathematical idea yes. that comes to your mind whenever you see a, a right, right angle, angle triangle. triangle. Especially when you would know these two components of that right angle triangle. And you're being asked to find, to find the length of... Uh, the hypotenuse. Girl, you couldn't let me ask the question. Gee, sorry. All right. So the length of the hypotenuse. That's where we are. The length of the hypotenuse. So what mathematical idea came to your mind? Your um, mind. My mind. Math. Idea. Triangle. Uh, 
today. Love. No, that's not a mathematical idea. Um, Hi. Pythagoras mm. theorem. theorem. There you All go. right, so Pythagoras' theorem would come to mind. Uh, yes? Yes. And, so, and it's right angle, yes. I'm thinking we can use that. All right, use so it then. Let's, let's speak a little bit about um, Pythagoras' theorem and what he says. Now, our students would have been familiar with this representation of the theorem. And basically, what this is saying is that our hypotenuse square yes, yes. We, we obtain that whenever we square the length yes. and in this case we're looking at the movement mm -hmm. so whenever we square that those two shorter sides right and whenever we find the sum right of those squares mm -hmm. it will give us the square of the hypotenuse well this is perfect for us perfect because we have the other two sides and we want to find the hypotenuse all right so bearing in mind that these are movements, right. just want to ensure that that point sticks because yes. we don't have the length of a side being negative. No, we don't. All right. So let's go with, so I'm squaring negative right. four and I'm also squaring negative three. I'm right. going to call this, I'm going to stick with the C for now. Right. All right. So what's the square of negative four? Well, that's 16. 16. All right. So and the square of three is? Nine. Nine. And 16 plus, uh, 16 when it's added Call to? Call yourself the bigger number, so that's 16. All right, so 25, I will not wait on you. Okay. No, that would make me a bad teacher. Okay. All right, let me wait on you. Count on your finger <gasps> if you need to, okay? Let I me ain't wait judging. on you. So I ain't judging. So when nine and 16 are added, right. we get 25. 25. All right, now, interestingly, we want the length of the vector. Right. They and didn't ask us about it square, did no. they? No. So, so how do I get C? How do I get C now? So, the, so we're doing the opposite. All right. So we're doing the inverse. Inverse right. of square is? Root. Square root? Square root. All right. right. So I'm going to be square rooting or because finding the square root. balancing our equation here, anything you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay. I hope we're seeing this. I hope this marker is bright enough. So I'm seeing here that C which is our vector, yes. would be equal to five, five units. units. So it would wow. have a length of five units. But I want to make a distinction quickly here because we have looked at A and we have looked at B. Right. But then when we are writing our vector, we are writing it in terms of X and, and y. y. Right. So I could probably, you know, replace these for now with X because this is our right. X component. And I could put... Y. y there, right. yes. And would have noticed that we square rooted here. Right. I want our students to see, because sometimes we see some formula in books, and we're not so sure, you know, what how it, it came means, up. right. Right. So if I'm finding C square, then it's X square. Let me just put this now. All right. So let's leave it at C square for now. Right. So X square. Or could just give the vector name. Plus Y square. So name it V. All right, so x squared plus y squared. And mm -hmm. we said in order to get c, we square, we square root, root both, both sides. sides right. yeah? So let's call the vector v for v, now. V, right. All right, so in order to get v, it's the square root of x squared plus, plus y squared. Y squared. And so you might see that... Um, All right, so what we're finding here is, is the, the magnitude, magnitude of the vector. Good, so and, and I'm going to talk about this symbol here now right, because right, sometimes right. when we get to the exam, right. we see these symbols and we're not so sure what, what they mean. It means right. So this is actually referring to the magnitude of the vector. Right. So you may see this formula, so let me write it out quickly. Mm -hmm. Magnitude of the vector, and that will be equal to... We would square the x component, plus the square y the y component. component, we add them, and, and then voila. square root, and then voila. voila. <laughs> All, All right. right. So as you would have said rightly, my dear, when we're talking about the magnitude of a vector, it is indeed the square root of the x, the square root of the sum of yes. the x component squared plus the y component squared. And in this case, it was negative 4 and negative 
three. All right, so I All think right. we can move on now. Okay, so here we have some vectors. Now we're zooming in a little bit on vectors R and T. Can you identify a relationship between R and T, Karima? Well, I'm looking at R and T, and you right. said that the, 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 the arrow tells the direction. Okay. So they look like they're going in the same direction to they, me. Uh-huh. They are. And magnitude, we spoke about that earlier. So yes. let's see what the X In terms of the length of the vector. Right. To me, it looks as if it's the same length. However, in math, we don't assume. We, we prove. We prove. Right? So, All let's, right. so let's see let's if we can prove. see if we can find the magnitude. And I'm putting in the symbol there right, for the magnitude. R. And my horizontal component is 1. Mm-hmm. And using up my formula, so let's put on my square root quickly. So the x component is 1, and I'm squaring that. And the y component is 2, and I'm squaring that as well. So the magnitude here is the square root of 1 plus 4. Mm -hmm. So that now becomes the square root of 5. And we could leave it there. We or could. it could be 2.23, I think. All right, R. so you have two square root of R. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the modulus of R. All right, so that would be 2.2, .2, and I'm putting it to three, three. decimal places for units. Now. Units. So, just to note, if you were not given a particular unit, if we're determining right. the magnitude of a vector, we still have to say so units. We say units, right? right? All right, so. And that's look, R. That's R. But then when T? I look at T though, I'm seeing the same one uh -huh. horizontally and I'm and seeing the same two, two vertically. One, one, two. Okay. Yes, that's R you just looked at. Yes. So do oh, that for T. T for me. One, <laughs> two. One. Yes. One, one two. two. There cool. you go. Short so, so it looks to me like they are the same lengths. So they have the same, same magnitude. Direction. All right. You go same ahead. direction. Mm -hmm. Same magnitude. That makes them equal. Equal it is. Equal? Equal, yeah. Equal. All right then. Right. Well, this is saying that vectors R and T are equal. Yep. Mm -hmm. bright, and vectors bright. with the same magnitude. So that means that vectors with the same magnitude going in the same direction, we call those vectors? Equal vectors. Excellent. All right. What about, is there any other, other relationship relation. that you can find between vectors R and T? Well, they look parallel to me, but I'm going to leave that one a little bit, but they look parallel okay. to me they, just by looking. They look but, you a know, little equidistant apart. Yeah, and they're on a grid, so it's, it's accurate. But we'll talk a little bit more about that parallel thing. Okay, no problem. All right. How about vectors R and U? Hmm. Well, we found R already, right. so I think we just need to check U and see what those components are. I'm seeing U going in the other direction. Opposite? Opposite direction. Okay, and yes. we talked about inverse vectors earlier. Yes, So tell did. me about the components now, though, because it's going in the opposite direction, right. and so my horizontal movement is now a negative one. Right. So I'll have to go from here to here. So that's one movement yes, to the left. Right. And, and two. then one, two downward. Right. So that's a negative two as well. Okay. So let's just nice this up quickly and right. see what's happening. What happens though when I square negative one? It becomes, we get a positive result because we're right, multiplying so, so two negative positive numbers. One? Yes. So I see one there. What about when I square negative two? I get positive four. Positive four. It looks to me like they have the same magnitude. What do you oh, think, Sharia? I think so. Yeah. But then again, guess what? Guess what now? So, R is going upward. I'm going to say upward for now. U is going in a downward direction. But they have the same magnitude. Well, a while ago we said vectors that are going in the same direction. With the same magnitude. With the same magnitude are equal. Mm -hmm. So now we have same magnitude but different, different direction. direction. So they can't be equal. But we would have used this term before. There must um, be the inverse. Didn't we talk about this? Yeah. 
Bring it up. Bring it up on screen, girl. I feel okay. bright this morning. <laughs> so they are not equal, but okay. ah, so what do we say? They are, they are the inverse of each other. Okay. So R there, as you can see on screen, R is equal to negative U. A negative Speak meaning no the to direction. the direction. R Beautiful. Everything are coming together, man. Nicely. Are you paying attention? I will have a little You're time. You're getting it? I so. hope you're getting it, you know. Write down everything. You know All right, so let's move on All right. quickly. Yes. We're seeing time. How about R and S? R and S, well, clearly, hmm. those are not the same magnitude for sure. No, not the same direction and either. Not the same direction either. But, but when I look at that though, Shariah, I'm seeing where vector S looks like it's twice. What? Vector R. We don't assume. But we don't we prove. assume. Not true. So what's the what? So what? let's look at that quickly. So we know that it's going downwards. So we go one, two. So that's negative so two negative for two. x component, okay, and cool. then one, two, three, four. Negative four for y component. All right. So let's quickly set that up. So the magnitude of s. What is two squared? Negative four. two squared, sorry, that's four. And negative four squared 16. will give us 16. So that's the square root of 20. I'm so happy I worked this out <laughs> earlier. And so I'm seeing here that this would actually be 4.47. 4 units. All right. So, so I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm right when I say that vector S is twice the length of vector R. Okay. I was said they are going in opposite direction. Okay. Cool. So, so S and R in opposite direction, mm -hmm. and S is twice R as you said. Yes. So that means that S is actually negative two R. Right, and that or, negative speaks to direction being right. different, and two they're speaking to the magnitude being twice. Right, or right. we could say that R is negative half of, of S. S. Makes sense. All right. So that means that they're parallel. Yes. And we said and we, we're going to talk about parallel. Right. You know, so it says here that two vectors are parallel if they are scalar multiples of each other. So, uh, so much important information is on the board. I really didn't want to erase. So we compared vectors R and S earlier. Well, R and T earlier. We also compared vectors R and U. And just now we did R and S. And we said that two vectors are parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other, if they are scalar, scalar and multiple. multiple. All right, so that's why I wrote this on the board, Shariah. So I'm seeing here that R is equal to T. Mm -hmm. Yes, so R is the same as 1T, so the scalar here is 1. Okay. Yes, so remember okay. we said scalar just have magnitude. So right, it's right, right, so right, it's right, right. So here, vector R is equal to negative U. So and that's so that's negative, negative one. one. U, okay. And then okay. we said R is equal to negative half S. Okay, so, so scalar negative half and multiple. is now the scalar. So I'm putting those two words together, scalar and multiple. So scalar is a real number. And it's multiplying. It's a multiple of the it's other. It's multiplying okay. that vector. All right, so that means that R, S, U, and T are parallel. All, they are all parallel. They are all and parallel. And time is really up on us. All right. Then. So we're just going to um, look at this question. It spoke about um, vectors A, B, and vectors D, C. And, you know, Shari, I think we're going to be picking up on this question for the next lesson. Look at it, viewers. Take a picture and see if you can answer this question based on what we would have covered oh, to today. Dance. Oh, Lord, you are still alive. You <laughs> saved me from this dancing girl. That's all, right. all today for CSEC Mathematics. Introduction to Vectors. We hope you grasped most of the points we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN today at 4 p.m. and in the School's Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. It also will be on video demand on One Spot Media right here on TVJ 
Until I next time, I am Karima Mundal Thomas. And I am Latoya Shiraya. CSEC Information Technology is up next. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>